the Dental Council of India platform for virtual learning. This platform was formulated during the COVID time last year. And this is one of the greatest initiative by the Dental Council of India. I'd like to thank the President, Dr. Bharat Shetty for this initiative and the entire team of the executive committee. Well, there are some instructions for the attendees. The first and foremost instruction is that one should at the time of registration do complete and proper details as your certificates will be generated on those details. Also, the certificates will be conferred to all the attendees provided the webinar is uninterruptedly attended. Sometimes the certificates will reach you by email in your junk email. So you should, you know, if you do not receive one in three to five days after the webinar is over, please check your junk email. Also, in case of any query or issue, drop in an email at webinardci at the rate gmail.com. Next, please. Well, the Dental Council of India website houses the archive of all the webinars which have happened. This is the 25th webinar of the series. And you can also download your certificate from this site if you haven't got it yet. Next, please. Well, with the certificate, you will also receive a feedback link. This feedback link is very, very important for us to improve on the content as well as on the topics which you would like to have from the Dental Council of India. Next, please. Well, at the onset, I'd like to thank the President of the Dental Council, Dr. Bharat Shetty, for this opportunity, the Secretariat, Mukeshji, Meenaji, the Executive Committee, present and past, Dr. Rahul Hegde, Dr. Anil Chandna, Dr. Katharia, Dr. Sharath Kapoor, Dr. Khandelwal, Dr. Vivek Singh, and the entire membership of the Dental Council of India. I'd like to have a special thanks to Dr. Virinder Goyal, who handholds the event. Also, on behalf of the Dental Council of India, I'd like to thank the colleges with the highest attendance in the last webinar. Savita Dental College and Hospital Chennai, Maharaja Ganga Singh Dental College, Sri Ganganagar, Vishnu Dental College, Bhima Karam, Narayana Dental College and Hospital, Nellore, and Al Bidar Dental College and Hospital, Gulbarga, and to each and every one of you who have attended the Dental Council of India webinars. Well, the topic today is basic concepts of removable and fixed orthodontic appliances. The speaker is none other than Dr. Sunil Mudhaya. He is a very well-known figure in the field of orthodontics and dentistry in the country. He had founded the Kurg Institute of Dental Sciences in the year 1999 and is a basic bachelor and master's in orthodontics from the Mangalore University and a leader at heart. He has, you know, uh, the institute has done MOUs with numerous countries like the University of Hong Kong, Thailand, Japan, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Hungary, Vietnam, Botswana, Malaysia, and Bratislava. Well, he is a very great uh, clinician and has also uh, worked on a lot of research like the Avishkar Research Laboratory he founded in the year 2014. Being a good Samaritarian, he also founded Samadhan, a private clinical facility for aesthetics, cosmetology, and special dental care. He has also founded the NGO Anirudh. With his research activity on the role of curcumin and turmeric, he is well known for his work on apical root resorption and retraction mechanics. Dr. Sunil has published protocols for administration and management of dental schools in South Asia. He has published protocols for infection control in dental schools in South Asia and is a member of the European Orthodontic Society, Southeast Asian Society for Dental Education, International Association for Dental Research, and is a renowned speaker in India and abroad. With these words, I'd like to welcome on the podium Dr. Sunil Muthai. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Professor Puneet Batra, my moderator for this uh, session. Um, I've known him well as the editor-in-chief of the Journal of the Indian Orthodontic Society, as a member of the Dental Council of India, as a member of the Smile Pain Advisory Council of India, and the past president of the Indian Society of Cleft Lip Palate and Craniofacial Anomalies. I'm honored, sir, to have you as my moderator this 
evening. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to this webinar. And I do hope you will all go back wiser in the subject of orthodontics after this session. This is a cafe on our campus called Cafe Cloud Nine, a favorite hotspot for the students. We are located in the southwestern hills of India, about one and a half hours drive from the city of Mysore. Coog produces most of India's coffee and pepper and a lot of India's spices. It is also called the Scotland of India. This is one of the scenes of Coog. And this is our campus, the Coog Institute of Dental Sciences by night. My gratitude and thanks to the President of the Dental Council of India, Dr. Bharat Shetty, the members of the Executive Committee of the Dental Council of India, and my dear orthodontic colleague, Dr. Chandana, member of the Executive Committee, Dental Council of India. Thank you, sirs. <clears throat> my webinar topic this evening is basic concepts of removal and fixed orthodontic appliances. I will concentrate this evening on the present concepts and treatment modalities in removal and fixed appliances with a, a patch on case reports, which will perhaps make it a little more interesting for all of you. Well, as you all know, early removal appliances has been defined by Philip Adams, who gave us the Adams class. He explains the limitations of removable appliances and the small degree of irregularities and how it's not possible to treat every type of uh, malocclusion completely, precisely with a fixed appliance. However, this has changed over the years, which I will explain in the in the slides as they come by as the term suggests removal orthodontic appliances are uh, appliances which can be removed cleaned and replaced at will by the patient i will not be going into the history of removal appliances nor into the regular textbook material like the types of appliances, the indications, etc., of removal appliances, because um, uh, I think a lot of this you will be able to get in your textbooks. <clears throat> now let's go to the indications of removal appliances. There is growth modification limited tooth movement like tipping, arch expansion or correction of individual tooth positions, and of course, retention. Even major tooth movements are now possible, as I said to you earlier, with new generation removable appliances, if I may call it so. And these are aligners. These are very interesting removable appliances which uses the present modality of artificial intelligence in orthodontics. And I will come to this interesting uh, development in orthodontic treatment plan at a later stage in this session. Functional appliances, as you all know, are ones that change the posture of the mandible, holding it open or open and forward. It could be passive, it could be active, it could be tissue bond. Active, basically functional appliances develop in the European continent, basically in Scandinavia primarily. Activators, bionators, the herbs appliance and the twin block are passive. Active are modifications of this, while uh, tissue bond appliances are the Frankel's appliance. Functional appliances are honestly very interesting appliances and um, We'll come to, a, to some parts of it as we speak in this session. 
these are a whole lot of there are a whole lot of classifications you know of these appliances depending on mal occlusion now the one that you see the first one in the shade of green is an activator you can see it's quite a cumbersome uh, device which has an upper and a lower uh, form in one unit we have the bionator which is the second it is uh, a more easy um uh, and less cumbersome form a version of an activator the activator was probably way back constructed sometime in 1910 by anderson there's an interesting story which i can't tell you about his daughter and how he made this activator happen uh that that is scientific research in clinical dentistry which you can read up about the bionator was later made by bolters a less cumbersome version frankel a german brought out the frankel's appliance in 1950 and of course the one and only um functional appliance in this generation which there are a whole lot of classifications of these appliances which i will not visit in this webinar uh, since it's anyhow as i said available in your orthodontic textbooks i will show you a brief chalk and board session now on general growth modification in functional appliances uh this is what has always enamored me it always enamored me as an orthodontic student growth modification in uh orthodontic appliances since it's basically a muscular uh, skeletal device now let us uh, now let us uh, have a small discussion on the a class 2 mal occlusion case where a functional appliance is used in a retrognathic manner this is the lateral pterygoid muscle now this lateral pterygoid muscle needs to be stretched with a functional appliance to bring this retrognathic mandible forward now when the lateral pterygoid muscle is brought forward is stretched forward by this functional appliance the growth centers are activated and there is more growth in the growth centers that is in the condyla area over here in the angle of the mandible and here in the symphysis area along with this there is also bone deposition right along the lower part of the mandible and from the condyle up to the angle of the mandible up to the symphysis however along with this you will find there is let's go with another color resorption or bone loss in this area that is in the coronoid process and in the this bit so this is very clear how we do this is we make a functional we construct a functional appliance where you position the mandible in a forward position so as to bring a class 2 uh, retrognathic mandible to the correct position you're bringing it to the correct position by uh, positioning the mandible forward so when you place this functional appliance the lateral pterygoid muscle is stretched which creates a a movement in this area 
and causes deposition of bone right along the areas where you see the plus points and there is resorption in the negative points. Now let me show you um, a case report of a patient treated with uh, twin block appliance. Of course, we other, have the other appliances too, like the activator and the bionic and the frankel, as I said the earlier, I've explained to you. Now, this was a 12-year-old male patient who reported at the Coog Institute of Dental Sciences Dental Hospital with a chief complaint of backwardly positioned lower jaw. On examination, he had a retrognathic mandible and orthognathic maxilla <clears throat> with eight millimeters of lip incompetency. There was a average growth pattern. He had an over jet of eight millimeters with an increased deep bite and as you can see, uh, a lip trap was observed. It was decided to start the case with twin block for correcting the retrognathic mandible. Twin block was the ideal choice as maxilla was orthognathic, there was average growth pattern, and VTO was positive. Following the twin block insertion, The twin block was used for approximately eight months of active phase. It was followed by two months of supportive and six months of a retentive phase. Pre and post treatment comparison is now you can see here, you can observe and appreciate. Shows a straight profile post treatment due to advancement of the mandible. Observe the profile photographs. The lip trap has been corrected, as you can see, in uh, profile three, pre and post. Check for the improved smile. <clears throat> Average growth pattern was maintained. Check for the change in the molar relation from class two in pre to class one. There's a decrease in overjet by about eight millimeters. Look at the third photograph, pre and post. Lower incisor proclination was avoided by incisal capping, of course. There's no change in the alignment of arches as uh, no expansion appliance was used <coughs> in this case. <clears throat> now let's come to another interesting modality, fixed functional appliances. This is something new, something more exciting a new generation of functional appliances which are used along with fixed appliance therapy. <clears throat> when I say with fixed appliance therapy, I mean with MBT or with um, pre-adjusted edge wise or what, whatever you may say about fixed appliances, which we'll come to a little later. Now I'll be showing you a case report of a patient treated at the CIDS hospital with a forces fixed appliance, uh, with a force, forces fixed functional appliance. <clears throat> Now, there are various modalities, various companies, manufacturers. So we have the forces device, we have the power scope, we have the herbs, we have the advancing two. These are all newer generation functional appliances. <clears throat> now, here we have a 17-year-old patient <clears throat> reported to the CIDS Dental Hospital with a chief complaint of lower jaw, with a smaller lower jaw, spacing between the lips. He had a retrognathic mandible, convex profile, and locking of the mandible. <clears throat> Since the retroclined upper incisors were locking the mandible and not allowing it to grow forward, we decided to start the case with leveling and aligning of the upper and lower incisors, thereby increasing the overjet. So it was something like this. This is the upper, the lower teeth. It was not allowed to come forward because of the trap. So we had to expand this or we had to relieve this upper um, dental uh, the, the, the teeth to allow the lower jaw. The upper incisors were proclined 
and the crowding corrected with aligning of the lowers as you see now here a forces <coughs> appliance was delivered this is a forces appliance which was delivered after reaching 1925 ss wire this was used to advance the mandible using remaining growth here remember it was an upward and a forward movement of the mandible with the forces appliance implants were placed <coughs> on the um on the lower arch and engaged to the post in the lower anteriors i hope you can appreciate this to prevent proclination of the lower incisor so there were two things done here the forces device was used for using growth and creating an upward and forward rotation of the mandible at the same time the implant was placed to prevent the proclination of the lower incisors <clears throat> so there was an orthopedic movement happening with the functional appliance there was uh, a dental uh, treatment not allowing the proclination to occur with a fixed appliance so this is the advantage of uh the fixed functional <clears throat> following 10 months of fixed functional therapy notice the change in profile in this patient this is pre and post post treatment change is seen with the profile becoming straight because of the mandibular advancement now we all have suffered now the, we have all suffered with the pandemic it has taught us many things it has taught us patience it has taught us perseverance and it has taught us new ways of working i don't think any one of us has been spared from this uh, new work culture the pandemic has also shown us the importance of the newer treatment modalities in removal appliances wherein fewer appointments are required in the dental clinic this became very important mind you in the times of the pandemic where everything went um, you know uh, out of gear if i can say so the common perception is that removal appliances means retainers and absolutely nothing more that has changed now and let me explain why another very interesting area in uh, orthodontics clear aligners clear aligners this is again uh, a treatment modality used in orthodontics where ai has become um, a form or a principle or a philosophy of uh, um treatment planning <clears throat> here the patient will start with a consultation with his orthodontist or her orthodontist the dentist will then do an intraoral scanning of the dentition with an intraoral scanner or he could otherwise use a polyvinyl siloxane uh, impression <clears throat> so the doctor will examine your teeth the doctor will then scan and send it to the aligner manufacturer you get your personalized treatment plan and it starts with fast precise digital scanning no gopi patti required your doctor will map, map out a custom treatment plan for you and you will never get to preview you will uh, even get to preview your own new smile before you start your treatment and so does your dentist so your aligners are customized for you your aligners are custom made for you in the largest laboratories available in the world <clears throat> for dentistry now so these are the different types of intraoral intraoral scanning companies this is just for your information these are available in the market now now these are the steps of the aligner process 
Now here you see in the clinician's office, you first visit your, the patient visits the clinician's office, initial consultation comes back to the clinician's office and dentists can accept or modify that treatment plan and send it back to the aligner company. So what does the dentist do? The dentist sees it, he shows it to the patient. They all agree upon, okay, the smile is looking good. This is how I'm going to look. And once that's agreed upon by both parties, the doctor and the uh, patient, it's sent to the aligner company. So once it's sent to the aligner company, they do the um, uh, treatment software, they scan the impressions, they do the clean check, and see the aligners that are formed. If you look at the, you know, the lower red marked um, borders, you see the number of aligners. I'll show you how the aligners in one of our cases that we treated. These are all packed, sent back to you by courier to the clinician's office. And there goes your aligner treatment, which is over before you know. In 11, 12 year, months to a year, if the patient is uh, disciplined, self-disciplined, his treatment plan or her treatment plan is done with. What's the advantage? Is accuracy. Fewer undos, better aligner fit, less goopy physical impression, no goop, no gagging. You see your smile before you even start your treatment. Can you believe? There's high resolution 3D interactive images of your teeth shown to you, to the patient rather. There's precision, there's up to 6,000 images taken per second. So that's the level of uh, AI and the level of precision. And you can track your progress after, at every appointment rather. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you a case report of uh, uh, aligners. This is a 28 year old patient treated, who reported at the Coog Institute of Dental Sciences Clinics. <coughs> Sorry with spacing in the upper and lower anterior region. An extraoral examination, she was found to have lip incompetency, slight proclination of the teeth. The patient was working in the UK, in London, and she, was, she had two very specific issues. She couldn't come for regular repeat dental appointments. And, um, the, you know, we found that the ideal treatment plan for somebody like this was uh, aligners. She happened to be my niece. Um, so we took the liberty of starting this case and I was able to convince her. Now on intraoral examination, it reveals pacing, decreased overjet and overbite trauma from occlusion. You can see that, you can appreciate that here. There was a ceramic crown on 2-1 and it was decided to treat this case with aligners. After, of course, explaining everything to the patient. <clears throat> Since trauma from occlusion was seen, we decided to do um, proximal stripping in the lower arch. IPR charts for the aligner company indicated which tooth to strip and how much to strip interproximal reduction report. So this is how an IPR report looks. You can see those marked in red in the second column. That's the stripping modality. Composite beads were placed on the lower canine for uprighting since the lower canines were slightly measly dipped. When the aligner is inserted now into the mouth, is active force that's delivered into the canines, which will upright the canine. So you can, I, I want, I hope you all can understand how this movement takes place without any wires. It's amazing. It's exciting. This is the complete set of four, uh, of the uh, complete set of aligners sent by the company for this particular patient, which has to be replaced every two to three weeks as specified on the packing. You can actually see the specifications. I don't know whether you can observe. These are the specifications on the packing, which the patient, he or herself can uh, modulate. 
So, so this is how it looks. Now, this is the first set of aligners which are passive aligners. These are called zero stage aligners for placing composite beads and for patient to get used to the appliance or to adapt for the patient, patient to adjust to the appliance. Patient with aligners in the mouth, observe that you can hardly make out that the patient is undergoing treatment. Can you believe that the patient is wearing the aligners? So this is the beauty of uh, using aligner therapy. <clears throat> Pre and post treatment pictures, the spaces were completely closed. Lips became competent with drastic improvement in smile. This is after nine months of aligner wear. Of course, uh, unfortunately, she couldn't come at the end of treatment because of the pandemic. And um, she sent her post treatment pictures to us. So that's her after the treatment. Now let's come to another very interesting um, area of, uh, of work, um, OSA or obstructive sleep apnea. Now this is a very um, interesting treatment modality, a newer generation removal appliance once again. This is otherwise called the silent killer. It causes severe health damage lack of sleep, reduced concentration at work, and a very damaging effect on personal life. Condi this is a condition where the patient will have difficulty in breathing during sleep because of a constricted upper or a lower pharyngeal space. You, the patient starts complaining of snoring, apnea, hypapnea, disturbed sleep, headache, weariness in the mornings are some of the symptoms that they complain of. <clears throat> now observe here the normal upper airway on the left and look, observe carefully that red arrow, you find that the upper airway is constricted, the uvula is narrowed, there is a narrowed airway and the airway is constructed in this patient. <clears throat> Constricted rather, sorry. Now observe this. <clears throat> There's no signs and symptoms in the awake position. Do you observe? In this red marking you can make out. There's absolutely no signs and symptoms in the awake position since the airway is very normal. But just look at the, um, the, the, um, the, the picture on your right in the sleep position. The tongue falls back. The red arrow shows how the tongue falls back. The airway space is constricted, causing disturbed sleep and difficulty in breathing. Now, this is why it's called the silent killer. Very normal in the day. Everything is well. But at sleep, it's killing you. So we thought a lot about this. <coughs> And we decided that we had to do something about <coughs> sleep apnea and OSA. And so we started a new center called Nidra. Nidra is our center for sleep disordered breathing, for sleep disorders, a specialized clinic established at the Coogan Institute of Dental Sciences for treating patients with OSA. <coughs> Treatment of OSA with customized digital mandibular advancement appliances. Now I'll show you a case report. Um, <clears throat> once again, a very interesting, these are exciting areas as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure it should be for you too. A 40 year old patient reported with retrognathic mandible lip incompetency. On further examination, it was found that he had severe snoring with difficulty in sleeping. He complained of severe irritability affecting his day at work. The reason for his irritability, his exhaustion, was not known. We did a detailed diagnosis of his case at Nidra. 
intraoral examination showed a backwardly placed lower jaw, which in turn was pushing the tongue backwards, as I'd shown you in the earlier, uh, you know, scans. A rubber-based impression was taken, the bite registered and sent to uh, Prosomnus Technologies US. This is the appliance. This was the Prosomnus de uh, device, which was delivered to the patient. And he was advised and informed <coughs> to use it only during sleeping, during times of sleep. Observe the change in profile, the appliance, few months of, within a few months, you can see the difference in between picture one and two, few months of wear of the appliance. <clears throat> Post-treatment intraoral photographs. Look at the pre and post comparison. It shows the difference in he looks stressed out in the first pre-treatment photograph. He looks more relaxed after using it for 18 months. The gentleman is now happy. He's not snoring. He sleeps well. He's less anxious. So this is the pre and the post-treatment lateral cephalogram in supine position, mind you, show the change in the pharyngeal space, which was increased. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember, orthodontics goes much past just aesthetics and just past, yeah, much past just um, uh, removal appliances or fixed appliances. <clears throat> now, this is the pre treatment Epsworth sleepness scale. It was 19 against 4 post treatment. The apnea, hypapnea index pre-treatment was 60.6 .6 per hour against 26.8 per hour post-treatment. Now observe the patient undergoing the, the, the treatment. This is how the patient looks, or rather this is the instrument, the device that is used. Or to diagnose and to understand the AH index and the, uh, uh, you know, the Epsworth sleepness index. It looks something like an EEG machine. <clears throat> Instructions to patients for all removable appliances are given here. These are the run-of-the-mill things that are said to patients. Now we go on to fixed orthodontic appliances. <clears throat> These are devices that are fixed to the teeth, either by cementation or bonding to the teeth surface. This is how a fixed appliance looks. I think all of you have seen what a fixed appliance looks like. Well, it was Edward Angle who used the fixed appliance in orthodontics and directly linked it to and guided us in the occlusal line and obtaining three-dimensional control over teeth. <clears throat> The development of fixed appliances started with the Fosher's expansion arch, went on to the E arch, pin and tube, ribbon arch, edge wise. And then the more recent ones, the labiolingual twin wire appliance, the Beggs appliance, then came the tip edge appliance from Europe, and now the pre adjusted <coughs> edge wise appliance. <coughs> The tippage appliance, I'm tempted to tell you, is something not used much in India. I'm going to show you a case report on that. It's an interesting device which has two wires placed one above the other. So you have two fixed appliances. <clears throat> so these are the components of 
the of a fixed appliance different components you must have seen it in your friends family and your close folk so i'm not going to go into the details of this now i'll show you a brief chalk and board session once again on bone resorption and bone deposition with fixed appliance therapy and along with that i will show you the different stages of fixed appliance treatment what i try to do is show you the tooth movement and bone resorption and deposition along with the different devices used in fixed appliance <clears throat> now there are two types before i come to that we have um, tippage and begs which uses more force and we use uh, we have pre adjusted edge wise which uses a little less force so the bone resorption and deposition is a little different in both the systems both both have been used for many years both are good systems but slightly different philosophy so here goes the video explanation tooth movement and the stages of fixed appliance now now here i'll give you a uh, i'll tell you a little about how tipping movement and uh, bodily movement take place in fixed appliance therapy now we have two types of uh, uh, treatments one is uh, tipping movement that is done with uh, the older techniques like begs and uh, tipping while the newer techniques which use bodily movement is with the pre adjusted edge wise techniques now um, the pre adjusted edge wise technique uses lower forces it uses lighter forces while the big and the tippage techniques the older techniques use heavier forces which cause tipping of the teeth so with that now as you all know this is the crown of the tooth this is the root this is the periodontal ligament the periodontal space and of course this is the alveolar bone okay the same there of course now this is the force that is applied on a tooth by a fixed appliance here too force is used on the tooth by a fixed appliance now what happens here is let us assume that this is light force yeah lf we refer to it as lf light force while this is a technique which uses high force as i told you earlier now what is a high force technique as i said the earlier techniques which are big or um tippage okay while the lighter forces are the newer um, uh, techniques which is pre adjusted on the pre pre adjusted edge wise techniques okay so what happens in when you have heavier forces used like in uh, the big uh, technique you find that there is tipping of the tooth which causes resorption of bone you know you know 
but also in this area in the apex of the tooth it causes resorption and causes stripping of the tooth because there is more heavy movement used over here why is against this in the lighter forces that are used with the pre-adjusted edgewise you find that there is resorption of bone only on this aspect this so what happens here is there is deposition of bone over here and there is resorption happening in this area ok so this basically cell death that happens in the epical area while there is cell action happening over here along with resorption cell death along with resorption and there is deposition of bone in both cases now why I have compared the techniques with the forces used and the resorption and deposition of bone <coughs> is for you all to understand that when we use the Bex technique or the Tippech technique we have three stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 in so in Bex technique in stage 1 we basically do the deep clouding and we start moving the teeth that is basically because we are using heavy force in Bex technique you are having a you will have a tipping movement as I explained to you in stage 2 you continue that tipping movement that is retraction of teeth and in stage 3 since you have caused the tipping of the tooth you need to uh, basically give the root talk that is you are talking the root or you are upgrading the root with springs that is done in stage 3 so this is about big technique that tipping movement is what causes cell death in the pike area however when you go to the pre-adjusted uh, edgewise you have again three stages the first stage is leveling and alignment the second one is the working stage in the working stage you are actually retracting the teeth while in the leveling and alignment you are basically aligning the teeth doing the deep grounding and all that you see so in the working stage you are doing the retraction and finally you are doing the finishing and detailing that is to the final finesse of the case now here as you see because you are using a lighter force and you are using bodily movement you find that there is gradual bone resorption here bone deposition over here and there is an active uh, cell life in the apex now as I just explained to you these are the various stages in fixed appliance therapy uh, in um, on the left of the slash you have the pre-adjusted edgewise um, um, stages while in the in on the right side you have the Beck and Tippage stages it's basically the same what, what we do in stage 1 in big and tippage is what we do in leveling and alignment in, uh, in pre-adjusted edgewise you can see this what we do in the second stage is the working stage in pre-adjusted edgewise we more or less do the same thing in the big and tippage it's otherwise called stage 2 there and then in the finishing stage in tippage in tippage I mean in uh, pre-adjusted edgewise the same thing stalking of the roots and things like that and uh, finally debanding and debonding is done in stage 3 of begs or tippets
I'll now show you <clears throat> a case of a fixed appliance treatment done at the CIDS clinics of, um, of a tip edge technique. This is a patient treated in our clinics with tip edge technique. Incidentally, the tip edge technique is not predominantly used in the Indian subcontinent as I said to you earlier due to the cost factor. It's a very popular uh, modality of treatment in Scandinavia and Western Europe. India uses more of MBT and free adjusted edgewise techniques. Now, this is a 19 year old girl reported with a chief complaint of irregularly placed um, teeth in standing lateral incisors with a 3 millimeter lip incompetency. Observe the pre and post treatment changes here. There's severe crowding in the upper and lowers with highly placed canines and instanding upper lateral. I'm sure you all can appreciate that. Post treatment crowding was completely relieved. Canines were aligned well and she's re it resulted in a beautiful smile. Pre treatment average growth pattern. 3 millimeter lip incompetency. Post treatment growth pattern remains the same, competent lips. This is a three quarter smile, three fourth smile picture. Look at that confident smile. The case was started with tippage plus mechanic 022028 while extraction of all four first premolars was done. Missing upper, there was a missing upper left second molar. Yes. Stage 1, 016 AJ Wilcock SS wire and class 2 elastics was used. <clears throat> you can see the class 2 blue elastic and the AJ Wilcock wire on top on the upper arch, lower arch. However, as I said to you, very interesting, you find another wire, around round Naitai wire was engaged from stage one in the inner slot itself as a modification, resulting in faster decrowding. So two modalities were taking place together. This technique is always enamored. End of stage one, where leveled upper and lower arches were seen, total treatment time was around six months now. Pre-stage two, all four second premolars were bonded and aligned. Stage 2, class 1 elastics were used in all the four quadrants from first molar hook to the cuspid circle. I'm just tempted to say that for the undergraduate students. Class 1 elastics are used for retraction. So you see the elastic engaged between the cuspid, between the canine loop or the cuspid loop to the molar band. While in the earlier, I'd shown you a class one, which causes class one elastic that is from the mandibular um, first molar to the canine uh, hook, which is used for opening of the bite. That's called a class two, and this is called a class one elastic. At the end of stage two, all spaces were closed. Class one molar relation on both sides with well aligned arches is seen. You can see the class one molar relation. Stage three for tip and top correction, as I had mentioned in the chart earlier. 014 night eye wire in the under slot and 2128 SS main arch wire was used. Remember here, there's no need for the sidewinder springs in Depeche Plus Mechanic. The work of the sidewinder will be carried out by under arch around night time. Total treatment time was 16 months. Please do appreciate the intraoral photographs from pre to post. 
that 16 months. Note that the post-treatment arches are well aligned. Now, these are components or um, auxiliaries of the fixed appliance. We, I mean, we have fixed appliances have um, three components. That's the auxiliary, the passive, and the active component. So now these are the auxiliaries. Here we have the passive components with the brackets, the bands, the lock pins, the ligature wires, all the metal, the metal components. These are more of the elastic and the holding equipment. These are more of the wires and the bands and the brackets, yeah, the components. And then we, these are the active components. These active components are so-called because they actually cause the movement of the piece. So they're called the active components. Now we have two types, we have uh, different types of brackets, <clears throat> metal, ceramic, combination, magnetic, various types of brackets, reinforced ceramics, metal reinforced plastics. Now, active versus passive uh, brackets. Now, it's, it's uh, basically self explanatory tight fit a tight fit fit of a bracket in a wire is makes it an active um, um, makes it active while a passive is a loose fit of the wire so here you will find that in an active this slide the uh, you have a sliding spring clip which encroaches on the slot from the labial aspect potentially placing an active force on the arch wire while here, the, in the passive, it's more open. It closes vertically and creates a more passive post. Now, digital design and customized appliances for treatment systems, like aligners are digital designs for removable appliances, which I just explained to you. In fixed appliance therapy, we also have digitalized systems and designs. I'll show you a case of digitalized and customized lingual and label appliances now. These are custom brackets used and the treatment plan is obviously hastened. It's faster because the treatment modality is more customized to each tooth in a custom bracket as the, as the term self explains. This is again using artificial intelligence using AI and orthodontics. <clears throat> Now, just like I showed you earlier for the AI removable appliances, here you have an intraoral scanning which can be done in the clinic if, you, if the dentist uh, has an intraoral scanner or he can use a PDS impression. Observe that you can, um, you know, you can obtain a virtual model that is a virtual model of pre treatment to post-treatment is sent back to the clinic after the acceptance. Look at the diagnosis and the treatment plan. It can be seen on the laptop, virtually shown to the patient, the doctor showing it to the patient. Virtual bracket placement and selection is then done once the patient and the doctor has agreed upon um, the treatment plan and they, the patient likes what he or she sees, then virtual bracket placement and selection of arch wire sequence is done in the laboratory in progression. And wire bending to make it precise is robotically produced. So this is, I would say, the ultimate in um, you know uh, orthodontics and fixed orthodontics now. Lingual appliances. <clears throat> there are many manufacturers of lingual appliances. 
I'm going to show you two examples of lingual appliances now. <clears throat> These are 3M incognito and lingual matrix. Now observe, for the undergraduate student once again, you see the whole bracket and arch wire is on the lingual aspect. Here. Now this is a 19-year-old reported at the CIDS um, clinics with complaint of forwardly placed upper and lower teeth. <clears throat> Extra oral examination showed a bimax protrusion with severe lip incompetency. Patient wanted, specifically asked for invisible orthodontics. Or rather, she didn't say invisible, she said she didn't want her appliance to be seen. Intraoral showed mild crowding, severe proclination. Buckle non occlusion with respect to 1 5 and a class 1 molar relation. Well aligned arches were seen with no need for expansion. So, rubber base impressions were taken and sent to the lab for treatment planning. The treatment modality was decided to be lingual orthodontics. <coughs> Treatment started with the lingual matrix, customized. Initial wire placement is seen here. <clears throat> Retraction was started after four months of commencing treatment. Observe the class one elastics in yellow for retraction on the inner surface. It's like looking at your mirror image in the mirror. You see the opposite side. <clears throat> Post treatment extraoral pictures of this patient. See the comparison shows change in profile, his lip competency, a confident smile. Treatment took 11 months to finish. Please observe the pre and post treatment photographs. Now let's go to a labial appliance. <clears throat> of course, the, the, term, the term is self-explanatory. The system allows to customize braces by using 3D, allows advanced orthodontics to calculate optimal orthodontics you want to use. Brace, braces are custom fitted to your teeth. The traditional approach is one size fits all versus the insignia approach, the customized approach, millions of treatment options for every two. Now this is a 19 year old boy, a male, with the complaint of forwardly placed upper and lower teeth. Extra oral examination showed bimaxillary protrusion with severe lip incompetence. Intraoral photographs showed mild crowding with severe proclination, class 1 molar relation. Rubber base impressions were taken and sent to the lab for treatment planning. Insignia implants. Treatment plan suggesting extraction pattern and robotic bended wire sequence. This is the treatment plan sent by the lab to us with suggested extraction pattern and wire sequence. This is the chart that's usually used for the treatment modality. This gives all the details of the patient. These are the extraction pre-treatment photographs following extraction of all first premolars as suggested in the uh, treatment planning chart. <clears throat> Extraoral and intraoral pictures following the first wire placement. Treatment was started with 
upper and lower 1425 copper naitai rather than the usual 012014 naitai at 5 months we changed it to upper 1625 copper naitai lower 1925 copper naitai note the wire sequence was completely followed as suggested by cat cam based in signa appliances as the system is relatively new we are still only around 6 months into uh, this treatment modality and this particular case this case is ongoing i just wanted to show you uh, that this is another modality that can also be used and uh, it has got a good future now <clears throat> let's come to the arch wires arch wires can be classified as preformed and custom made as per material to stainless steel gold ceramic etc it could have a post attached or it can come without a post without hooks within the wire itself it can be classified as per shape of the arch wire depending on what type of arch form you need to select the arch wire could be passive it could be active depending on what your treatment modality happens to be these are elastics that are used in orthodontics we use separators closures for power chains for closing of space ligature elastic and that's how they it looks very colorful to attract the patients and to attract students to join orthodontics perhaps now these are general instructions to patients <clears throat> brush your teeth avoid eating hard and sticky food contact your orthodontist in case of pain routine dentist of course you need to visit your orthodontist at least once a month once in 21 days ideally these are certain complications that would that could happen with the orthodontic treatment and that's why you're told to visit your orthodontist uh regularly periodontal problems demineralization tooth mobility pain tooth resorption loss of tooth vitality but of course none of this would happen none of this can happen if the patient is regular and uh to the orthodontist clinic and the orthodontist is proactive with this i would like to thank all of you for uh being here at this webinar i would like to thank dr puneet batra for his brilliant moderation of this um webinar and for all the time he has taken um before this webinar happened to you know there is a lot of groundwork that have goes in to for all these webinars so dr puneet batra thank you so much for your time and the effort you've taken in and the patience you have shown in uh, getting this webinar to this stage i wish to profusely thank dr virender goel i think dr virender goel and uh, mr mukesh raj are like two supermen there who have literally managed these webinars and our webinar today a lot of work has gone in and um i greatly uh, appreciate and thank you for your time your patience and your painstaking efforts sir along with mr mayank thank you so much dr virendra goel mr mukesh and mr mayank with this uh, i have completed my webinar on removal and fixed appliances well we are having um, a few uh, very interesting um uh, you know functions um, 
or symposiums that are going to happen, events that are going to happen in orthodontics uh, very soon uh, in this beautiful province district of Ku. And um, <clears throat> I would like to just show you these. These are the upcoming international events. The first upcoming international event, a virtual event, is going to be on co the COVID-19 pandemic current updates for orthodontics. On the 18th of March, Thursday, we'll be conducting a one-day marathon international virtual symposium with speakers from across the globe. <clears throat> Dr. Anil Channa, member of the Executive Council of the Dental Council of India, has kindly consented to inaugurate this symposium. Thank you, sir, for your consent. The speakers at this symposium are Dr. Professor Chung Kao from the, the head of the Department of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics at the University of Alabama, USA, and a close friend and colleague who's been to Coop on several occasions. Dr. Grace O, a specialist orthodontist from Singapore. Professor Peter Bobbley, a, a, a great friend of ours from the University of Debrecen in Hungary. He's been here on several occasions and we visited him at uh, Debrecen too. Dr. Simona Dancikova, from the Slovak Medical University, Dr. Shadi Samavi from the University of Jordan, Dr. I I uh, Ivana Dubospa from the Czech Republic, a close friend once again who's visited us many times, our one and only Professor Anmol Khala, distinguished professor at the Kug Institute of Dental Sciences, Professor Silju Matthew, the president of the Indian Orthodontic Society. These are going to be our star speakers on the 18th of March. Um, it's going to be a marathon session starting at 9 o'clock, ending at around 4.35 Indian Standard Time. I would also like to thank Dr. Sri Krishna Chalsani, President-elect of the Indian Orthodontic Society, who has kindly consent, consented to do the valedictory. <clears throat> now, along with this, we will be conducting the first ever Indo-European Orthodontic Symposium. An orthodontic conference in Cook under the aegis of the Eurasian Orthodontic Society and the Indian Orthodontic Society. This conference was supposed to have happened in October last year. However, due to the pandemic, we had to postpone this. And the conference will now take place certainly sometime between November 2021 and February 2022, depending on the pandemic situation. We are going to have about 22 speakers from all over the world, from all the continents, uh, who will be here to, um, uh, you know, give us their wisdom on orthodontics. So here's a small video regarding the IIOS, which is going to be hosted in Coop sometime at the end of this year.
come enjoy Coog in all its grandeur. All of you are invited. We'll be very happy to have you. Enjoy Kodwa culture. Kodwa culture is otherwise Coog culture and our traditions. And enjoy nature with the science of orthodontics and all the research that we can give along with it. Now, the national digital health mission of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has initiated the process of creating a digital health ecosystem. I'm proud to tell you that who will be the first institute to implement electronic health records through the SNOMED CP machine, learning and artificial intelligence based analytics. We've tied up with, um, um, with a firm, a startup company called Mediva, um, which is working very seriously with the CIDS into AI-based analytics. <clears throat> Time and the world do not stand still. Change is the very law of life. And those who look only to the past or the present are certainly certain to miss the future. That's what John F. Kennedy, the 35th U.S. President, said, and I would very much agree with him. <clears throat> this is my Department of Orthodontics, faculty and postgraduates. This is a panoramic view of the Coog Institute of Dental Sciences campus. It's a 40-acre verdant private forest with coffee uh, estates with eight acres dedicated to the dental campus. I'm proud to say that it is an eco-friendly campus with 100% uh, power generation through solar power, which is now being exported to the national grid. It's 100%, we have a 100% biodegradable waste management system with complete conversion to biomanure. All our waters are recycled and reused in our estates and our gardens. This is our campus. Thank you. And now I think we go over to my moderator, Dr. Puneet Patra. Wonderful lecture, Dr. Sunil. It was really an eye-opener. And uh, I can see in the chat box numerous people writing comments that it was such a wonderful lecture. And I must compliment you for the great work you have shown here. And uh, there are a few questions which uh, uh, I would like to ask you. But there are so many. I think uh, they, they would be answered at a later date. But a few of them uh, are pertinent to today. Uh, one of the questions asked by the participant is that how long do you ask your patient to wear retainers? Because most patients after active orthodontic treatment want to know. One year is what I would suggest. But, um, you know, if I have to be honest as an orthodontist, we do see relapses after that too. So if the orthodontist has a doubt, the advice I would give to an orthodontist is that going for a fixed retainer, a lingual fixed retainer for a little longer, keep probably monitoring it and you know keep checking it once in six months. But otherwise, ideally one year to one and a half years. Right, perfect. So uh, one of the other question is that uh, there are doubts about TMD, which is common post orthodontics. Any comments on that? Well, um, if diagnosis is done well, if an orthodontist prognosis is good, there is no question of temporomandibular disorders happening. Those are complications that might arise and if uh, very well monitored, even if uh, you know not intended, it can be corrected as and when by reducing pressures and things. Right. Uh, another question is that about aligners. 
uh, why uh, aligners are so expensive and uh, lab charges for aligners and can we treat all cases with aligners well aligners are used for minor corrections initially but now even complex movements are possible however expenses because of the lab costs and premium materials are used so invisalign is an american uh, company indian companies like smile aligners flash dent care are now also in the market and they are much cheaper uh yeah uh, the next question is uh, why uh, or rather what preventive orthodontics uh, should be recommended by orthodontists rather than just doing corrective orthodontics well space maintainers right from um, you know uh, from the time of say 8 years 9 years 10 years before the eruption of the permanent teeth come in can reduce the chances of orthodontic treatment serial extraction is a process that everybody knows about so if i would suggest that the patient needs to go to the dentist regularly visit the orthodontist regularly right from age 6 7 to avoid uh, or to you know um avoid orthodontic so is every snorer a sleep apnea patient sorry sir is every snorer a sleep apnea patient no no not every snorer has osa but snoring is very common um uh, it's most it's one of the most important symptoms from osa or for osa right and uh, in your eyes orthognathic surgery for a retrognathic mandible and wide overbite is it a good indi- uh, indication once yes once growth ceases then bilateral sagittal split osteotomy can be uh, performed if growth remains then functional appliances can be right now i'll come to the last question because there are too many and uh, we are running short of time uh, is what cases are extraction cases in your eyes what cases are extraction cases it depends on the degree of proclination the amount of crowding and of course periodontally compromised or not whether the case is periodontally compromised or not so it depends on each case if you have a severe degree of proclination and a large amount of crowding there is not enough space in the arch it's like a a basket of oranges where you a basket can fill 100 oranges and you want to put 120 in so it's basically you have a smaller bone smaller arch form and you have larger teeth so that goes into genetics and to hereditary how this happens and that's the reason why perhaps you will have to do extraction instead of stripping on sro d cloud right yeah uh, thank you very much uh, dr sunil for uh, answering the questions thank you and can we move on to the next slide please thank well, you well uh, on behalf of the dental council of india i would again like to acknowledge the highest attendance in the last webinar by savita dental college and hospital chennai maharaja ganga singh dental college tri ganga nagar Vishnu Dental College Bhimavaran Narayana Dental College and Hospital Nellore Al Badar Dental College and Hospital Gulbarga I would also like to thank the president of the Dental Council of India Dr Bharat Shetty for this opportunity and creating this live platform which has you know shared knowledge across so many parts of the world among the dental fraternity I'd like to thank the secretariat Mukesh ji Meena ji executive committee members especially dr anil channa sir for uh, along with the past and the president uh, uh, present ec members the entire membership for their strong fellowship in uh, helping out with the webinar committee i would also like to thank dr virender goel sir who has handheld everyone into these webinars and uh, i would uh, like to be you know just say that all the participants have made this event a grand success 
well the 26th dci lecture is not going to it is going to be happening on the alternate week that was on the 28th of march the topic is principle and design of caste partial dentures the speaker is dr omkar k shetty the dean dy patil university school of dentistry navi mumbai the moderator for the event will be dr swatantra agrawal principal professor and head department of prosthodontics kotiwal dental college and research center muradabad a former member of the dental council of india thank you all thank you for, thank you for being part of the event thank you sir thank you dr goel dr puneet and to all of your audience